Hey, this is Dawn. Welcome back to Dawn's Turkey Diary. And today we're going to journal about 10 private excursions or really recreational activities that you can partake in at Walt Disney World Resort. And I have a guest today. Guess who it is? You'll see in a minute. Here we go. Well, guess what? I told you I had a guest today with me and it is my hubby, Ryan. He's back. Hello. I also made him smile more on this episode because he always looks like such a Grinch. I was like, people are going to think you're horrible. You need to smile. So, smile. Told you. Today, like I said, we're going to talk about 10 private excursions or like recreational activities that you can do at Walt Disney World Resort if you're not going to one of the parks or you just want to somewhat chill that day we have done these activities that we're talking about today but i am going to look at show notes so i can give you correct maybe prices or phone numbers but it can all change at any time you know how disney or any business is so here we go we're going to start with number one it is private cabana rental at walt disney world now you can only do this at some of the deluxe resorts which you know can you name some of the deluxe resorts that you can do a cabana rental at, just off the top of your head? The Poly. Yes, Polynesian Village Resort. <clears throat> okay. That's what I want to know. No, come on, we've done it somewhere else. Come on. It's next to the Poly. Oh, yes. Uh, and you loved it, too. And it was pretty cool. And for the life of me, I can't Come on. The That's Grand the, the big one, <laughs> The Grand Floridian Resort, it was special because the monorail went literally right behind our cabana. They do have three, and they are the deluxe cabanas. They include TV, refrigerator, and you get a VIP, not handler, what would you call it? Not even a waitress. More like a, a, waitress. Maybe an attendant. attendant. A cabana attendant. That's the proper, I guess, lingo for it. And it is uh, luxurious for sure. You even get cool wipes there. Remember they brought us some cool wipes in case we were sweating or hot. Fruit now, basket cokes. Yep, fruit basket. <clears throat> that's right. If you do a full day rental, they'll bring you a fruit basket. But sometimes on a half day, they will. It really depends which resort. Um, definitely the Contemporary does cabanas as well. I think they have three but uh, we have rented them at the Polynesian Village when it used to be the Volcano Pool. That was our first time ever. They no longer have the Volcano Pool. It's been renamed the Lava Pool and they no longer have cabanas at their feature pool. They do have what's called Oasis Patios and that is their so-called cheaper cabanas at the Oasis Pool, which is their garden pool. Let me give you an example. The deluxe cabanas, which are at the Contemporary <clears throat> and the Grand Floridian Resort, are priced as so. Half day and full day. Full day would be 10 to 7. Half day would be 10 to 2 or 3, depending on, you know, the day and the amount of people there. A full day rental would cost you anywhere from $250 to $350. It depends, again, which resort, too. They are priced a little bit differently. Half day would be $150 to $200. So let me just straighten this out. The Polynesian Resort has Oasis patios. They are not deluxe cabanas. They used to have them. They don't anymore. Grand Floridian and Contemporary have deluxe cabanas that come with a TV, a refrigerator, a specific attendant um, to bring you drinks or what have you. Um, so... It's deluxe, you have chaise lounges, you have towels provided for you. You have more of a VIP designated spot to store your stuff at, in essence. It's just a nice little extra perk that you can do. It's one of our favorite things, I think, to do at the parks on an off day <clears throat> um, at Disney. I mean, uh, him and I, I like definitely to relax, love so. to do it. We, he loves to relax. Well, I love to relax and then have people bring you drinks. Come on. And then you can order lunch or what have you, but lunch and things like that are at an additional expense. A lot of times you can get rained out. We have had that happen a few times. And if you booked a full day rental and you know the normal rain shower that comes every what? Three o'clock. Two, three o'clock. Summertime, three o'clock. And you get rained out, then sometimes you um, can get your money back 
really for the full day sometimes because it can rain you out to where they have to close everything down and, and you can kind of get your money back and you've enjoyed almost a full day at the cabana. So that's always nice. But so point is number one, cabana rental, it's definitely something fun to do on a relaxed day from the park. If you're interested in that, you can dial 1407-WDW-PLAY. For some reason, WDW keeps stumping me. Um, and you can reserve your cabana rental then. Or if you're on property, you can reserve it at one of the marinas, depending on which place you're staying at. It's six people, by the way, at the cabana rental. And uh, I think that's all I want to say about that. Number two, private fishing excursions. We have done this twice. And actually, I've done it once. But my husband has done it twice. We prefer, we like to ask for Tim because he's one of our <clears throat> favorites now. You can either rent a nitro fishing boat. They have two of those. Or a 21 or 25 foot party barge depending on how many people are coming. I think... Um, if you take the bass boat, it's artificial baits only. I think it's only two people to, yeah, you per can, party. It's artificial baits only. If you take the house boat, I think it's four to six. Yeah, people? Yeah, yes. And it's artificial or uh, live bait. It includes your snacks, your non-alcoholic beverages. It includes tackle, bait, and your equipment. And no fishing license. And no fishing license at all. And an experienced guide, which Tim was our first one that we did. And then we requested him for their second fishing excursion. There are two to four hours long, morning or afternoon. I think one is the latest one that you can reserve and they can go hour to hour after that. It's about $299. Dollars. Two something. I don't know. something like that. But I do have the number for you to call if you're interested. It's 1407-WDW-BASS. B-A-S-S. And request him. He is amazing. We've done it twice on Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake, and it was a lot of fun. You can also do it at some of the Epcot resorts as well. But as far as the private fishing excursion on the Nitro, it's only two people that can come along with you, and you could share that cost if you'd like. Uh, the 21-foot party barge, like we said, it's five or six people, something like that that can come along with yeah. and we've had two people him and i fished on our first out of the polynesian resort and let's see you aj beth payton yes. and tim on the last fishing excursion we stayed at boulder ridge he just drove the boat over picked uh, them up and they had fun and caught a lot of fish and by yes, the way on our first fishing excursion who was better it's always me no he's better normally it's always me no I was definitely the better fisher woman. I don't know. It was like I was in the magic of Disney bubble and I just kept catching the fish. And the best part is I didn't have to take the fish off or bait the hook. Tim was there for that. So come on, ladies, you can do it. And my husband was, I think, a little bit embarrassed because he was like, yeah, I'm the fisherman. I know how to do this and that. But I showed him up. And he probably thought, oh, this girl, you know, she's probably not going to be able to fish that well. But I showed him. Okay. Number three, the private fireworks cruise. We have only done this once. Um, we were staying at Boulder Ridge and we made it a big family affair. My parents, my brother, his wife, my daughter who just turned 21, my son and his girlfriend, and Ryan and I. So we had quite a few people aboard. I am looking at show notes because I want to make sure I tell you everything. That was a pretty cool experience, wasn't it? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, that's not something you definitely want to do all the time, but it was definitely a neat way to see the fireworks. The music's piped in. You're on a boat in uh, Seven Seas Lagoon. Um, it was just amazing. You have a, a, a great view. You're giving really a tour guide around some of the resorts and some of the interesting facts at Walt Disney World. Um, you do have a boat captain who takes you around so you're not having to drive or anything. It does include snacks and sodas and banners and balloons. Now, if you want anything additional such as alcoholic beverages or private dining, you'd have to book that through the private dining. And that number is 1407-824-824. 2474 if you're interested in the alcoholic beverages or like for my daughter it was her 21st birthday so I ordered her chocolate covered fruit tray we had champagne and some other alcoholic beverages 
and we had a cake for her 21st birthday. So that part was added through private dining, but the rest was included with the rental of the party barge. You can rent a 21 foot party barge. That is $299 plus tax. It seats eight and or the grand yacht, which I actually did try to get us. I'm not sure if he really knows that or not. Um, but it was actually booked up at the time. And the cost for that, it does seat 18, but if you have a butler, they can bring aboard. It can only seat 17 of your closest friends. That is $399 per hour. So that's very expensive, but it's a luxury experience um, at that. We actually booked, I wrote it down, the 25 foot, um, and it was 349 plus tax and tip, because you definitely want to tip that boat captain, especially if they really went out of their way um, for you. And again, the private dining is 1-407-824-2474 if you wanted to have any extra special touches. I know that there was the Pirates and Pals, I think is what it's called, cruise that was going around with a bunch of kids. That was really fun. I'd rather be on it. Yeah, it sounded extremely fun and loud. And those boats were floating, or, you know, there's only so much room in the water for the view. So uh, they were coming really close to us and it was extremely loud to where we were trying to hear some of the fireworks music, but it was so loud. Um, sometimes you really couldn't hear it. I mean, we know what the music sound like. It's not, not that big a deal, but my parents had never really seen it before and I wanted them to see it. And it was just, the Pirates and Pals boat was rather loud. And I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. I could be wrong. It could be some other kind of Pirates cruise, but it was a Pirates cruise. I know that because it sounded like a bunch of pirates on board. Yeah, and, and that's why he wishes he was on it, I think. <laughs> you took kids off throwing alcohol on me. <laughs> Number four, something fun. They used to be called sea mice, and they are actually called, I don't know why Disney changes the names to have these things, but it gets confusing. They're now called sea racers. They've been called sea racers for quite a while, but when we first go, water mice. We all, water mice, that's right. What did I say? Sea mice. <laughs> Either way, when we first go to somewhere like Disney Hollywood Studios, we know it as its former name, MGM. So we will call something to death what we first went to Disney calling it. So, well, and I just screwed that up actually anyway. So that's pretty funny. Water mice? Yeah, formerly known as water mice. But I still say downtown Disney. Yeah, but see, it says will. another one. Disney Springs, downtown I'll Disney. I always say downtown Disney. But, so, it used to be called water mice. They're called sea racers now. Either way, remember the first time we ever rented that? Mm -hmm. I want to see if you remember. I, I remember the kids were small. Yep, the kids were small. We stayed at Wilderness Lodge. That was our first deluxe resort ever. That was our second visit to Walt Disney World, probably in 2006, maybe seven. Maybe seven, I think. Mm -hmm. Either way, the kids were babies, and we were we rented two. He rented one with 
one of our kids, Logan. probably Logan. Logan. I rented one with Peyton because I was a little nervous to drive this little boat around. Y'all, you know, it's very inexpensive. You can do it at the marinas on Seven Seas Lagoon, Bay Lake, even the Epcot Resorts. The prices are 32 plus tax per boat seats, two people. There is a weight limit. It is 320 pounds or less. That's combination. 12 years or old to drive. I remember when Logan first turned old enough to drive and I was nervous though. Because I was like, oh my God, who knows what he's going to do. Oh my God. It's a lot of fun though. It's very inexpensive. You show your resort ID. Um, you go to one of the marinas. You do not have to rent with a reservation or anything in advance. And um, it's just a lot of fun. And just remember, there's water taxis flying by, ferry boats flying by. Um, the cops are out there. What do you call them? Patrol? Water patrol or whatever. So, you know, you can only do so much damage, but... Still, it, it can be kind of scary. Bay Lake is a safer place to drive, by the way, just to let you know. Less, uh, less ferry boat traffic and everything else. So that's a lot of fun. That was number four, and it was Rent the Sea Racers. Number five. We're already on number five. It is the Sp Spirit of Aloha Where's at Walt Disney World. It is at the Polynesian Village Resort. It is like a luau, luau dancing fire show pretty much. It is very overpriced. It, um, it, you definitely have to make reservations way in advance for this. We have probably done this now about four times, four or five times. And that <clears throat> is more than enough. Um, I would be okay if we probably never went back. So it takes you kind of, it, it out of, takes you out of there and puts you more in a Polynesian Hawaiian yeah, vibe. A little bit. I mean, more laid back. It's just not as much Disney. Yeah. So if you want a little break from the parks, characters yeah. and parks, and it's something that's, that's true. It's a nice transition. Okay, it is uh, at Luau Cove at Polynesian Village Resort. Um, like I said, there is a. It's pretty much a <coughs> Luau. It's food. It's a dinner show. There's fire dancing, which I think is the best part, and it kind of tells a cute little story that has not changed since we first. Um, went it's buffet style they have what veggies pork ribs uh roasted chicken and it does include beer and wine um you know they bring it to you extremely slow <laughs> i don't believe they could get more than one drink at a time but uh if you wanted any specialty cocktails or anything like that you can do that but that will be at an upcharge um, they are tiered one, two, and three seating. So it's category seating, um, one most expensive, two mediocre, and three the least expensive. Pretty much right around the stage and the side um, is category one, um, more of the side, category two, and three is pretty much up on a second level and to the side. Um, and you don't really know where you're sitting till you are seated that evening. Um, you can use the Disney dining plan. It will count as two of your food credits per person. Now, for category one, it's $78, and that includes everything. Your gratuity, your tax, everything. $78 per person for category one. Category two is $74. There's not much of a difference. And category three is $66. And those are adult prices. An adult at Disney is 12 or older. So really not that much of a difference in category one and category two sleep uh, sitting. There. That's true. That's There's not, really much, not of much of a difference in category one and two uh, <clears throat> seating. Um, for children, though, it is priced differently. Like I said, it is one uh, category one, forty six dollars. Category two is forty nine dollars. That's not forty four dollars. Sorry about that. And cat that wouldn't make sense. It goes backwards. And category three for children is thirty nine dollars. And uh, again, that includes all your sodas, your drinks, and beer or wine. So it is a nice experience. It is definitely something you want to book way in advance. I mean, right when you have that booking window, you want to you want to take, you know, take book it, spit it out, Dawn. Um, and you can just call the basic dining at Walt Disney World to book that if you're interested. And like he said. It is a nice experience that takes you out of the park vibe, the normal Disney character vibe, and you know, kind of takes you to a different place. So that's a nice way to look at it. More response, and I give you all with I know I Kelly Hospital Corps. I'm Auntie Mimi. Welcome to my Valley. I am a teacher. 
And I have taught generations of students that have beautiful clothing and dancing. Now, does anybody here like clothing and dancing? Like Tanisha dancing? Yeah. Okay, I hear you. How about Hawaiian hula dancing? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Now, we are on to one of his favorite pastimes besides fishing. It is golf. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can uh, book any golfing excursion <clears throat> you're interested in at 1407WDWGolf. I sound like an advertisement. And um, I do know that you've played at the Magnolia Golf Course. The Magnolia, the Palm. The Palm. Oak Trail. And Oak Trail. He has played at all three of those. Um, played the Palm. And the Magnolia several times. He's played a few different times, I and I think only once he's brought his actual golf clubs. Mm. Maybe twice. Oh yeah, two that's right. Times, that's right. Times. But he has also. No, I've never played with. You've never rented I've theirs. Always my, yeah, I've always bought my clubs when I play. You do not have to no. bring your own clubs. You can actually rent them, um, and that's right. I think I, they have Titleist clubs. I'm not sure, but I think that's what you rent. They have the best of the best clubs. It's, yeah, it's top notch stuff, but. So, if you're interested in a nice halftime or you need to bribe your husband to go to Disney, golf is a good way I'm, to do it. I'm not 100% sure about the Titleist clubs. I haven't rented their clubs, but I, I know a couple years ago, I think that's what it was. But and remember, anything we say can change. That can change for sure because <laughs> I'm scatterbrained. But, and, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, the main only the Palm are great and everybody plays them. Oak Trail is a really nice golf course for if you just kind of want to get out of the way and play it i really really enjoyed it and outside of disney if you're since you're in florida anyway if you're in the destin area the links course at sand destin is one of the most underrated golf courses in all of florida even though we're not talking about <clears throat> sand destin Sorry, right now but it is but, but sand destin is a fun place to go if you've not been it's one of my favorite courses i ever played um also after three the prices are cheaper um Golfing at Walt Disney World. Yes, but if you plan a summertime at three o'clock, you're going to rainstorm and you're going to sit in the clubhouse for an hour while you wait for it to pass. <laughs> yeah. Don't book your tea time at three. Yeah, don't do that because we had a date scheduled once at our at a restaurant. I guess at Polynesian, we put the kids in the cute little what was it called then? Peter Pan Club then. Mm -hmm. It was called something then. It was different than what it is. Well, it's not even. It doesn't even exist now. But either way. So I was waiting on him. I had quite a few drinks in the meantime because he was late, but he was late because a rainstorm had happened. And uh, do you want to tell him about the golf uh, cart? My playing partner decided, uh, he asked me how I was getting back to the Polynesian. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't uh, quite sure. I was just going to take a cab or something. And I mean, it was right there too, though. My partner and me had a bunch of drinks that day because it was taking a long time because everybody was stacked up because everybody had to wait on the rain. And when we got done, he's like, well, how are you going to get back to uh, the poly? And I said, well, I said, I'll just take a cab or something, call a cab. So we pull up and we're fixing to turn our car in and he just keeps on driving. He drives right on down the road and pulls, me, so right illegal. Up, pulls me right up to the poly. In on the golf, the golf cart. cart, from the golf course. It wasn't too far no, though, no, right? Like a half a mile We drove down the road something. in a golf cart, a rented golf cart. <laughs> He pulls right up to where I'm glad Ballet we didn't Parking get is. Out right to where Ballet Parking is. And the bag, I mean, the guy who comes out and gets your bag. Ballet. Ballet. He just comes out and he, he says, uh, Which bag is yours, sir? Takes my bag off the car and I give him a tip. I go inside. And the bank guy. Really late. Like, like an hour cart. and a half yeah, late. He drives the golf cart right back to the golf course and turns it in. Yeah. So, nonetheless, we didn't have much of a date that night. Yeah, not only could I, I had a date with the bartender at the Polynesian not only, at Ohana. No, it wasn't Ohana. Yeah, not only was that oh, probably yeah, could have got blown off or out of the hotel. Yeah, we probably could have got arrested for that. Yeah, thank God um, we're still welcome back at Disney. <laughs> I don't know if they ever saw this. That was a long time ago. And uh, yeah, it was a very interesting story, very interesting evening. And golf can be fun at Walt Disney World. It's a lot of fun. If you're interested, like I said, at 1407 <clears throat> golf. And you can rent, uh, you can rent it all. You do not have to bring any of the stuff with you. So that's a lot of fun. We're on to number seven. Okay, golf cart rental at Fort Wilderness Campground. We'll say that is number seven. Again, you do not have to be a resort guest at Fort Wilderness to rent them. Um, you can rent them by calling 
two. And we rented two of them before with family members and we rode around just kind of checking out Fort Wilderness Campground and all it has to offer. Um, um, you can get a four-seater <clears throat> golf cart from 1 p.m. to 11 a.m. the next day. So they consider that like a 24-hour period or a half day, um, excuse me, a full day rental. You could do a half day or a full day rental. And that's what we did, but we really only used it about four hours tops oh, and turned it back in. Yeah. Um, 18 years old um, to rent and 16 years old to drive. So remember that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, you don't have to be a resort guest at Fort Wilderness to reserve it. And the cost is about $62.91 plus tax. And you will pay at the reception outpost at Fort Wilderness. It is definitely something totally different to do. Again, like we said, the spirit of Aloha kind of takes you out of the park. And the, the vibe of Go, Go, Go Disney. And this brings you into more of a campground feel, a wilderness. You're in the trees. You just don't feel like you're at Disney. It's a lot of fun. You can go to the gift shops. You can drive around and look at the water um, on Bay Lake. And, um, yeah, it's just something nice to do. And if you've never been on a golf cart, it's kind of fun to drive around a golf cart. That's a, what it's I like a great to way to see it because it's such a big park. Yeah. So you can get around pretty quick. You can get from one end to the other. Yeah, that's for kind sure. Kind of see everything they have to offer. Okay, no hands. And now that we're talking about Fort Wilderness, we'll continue that. Um, and we're going to talk about horseback riding at Fort Wilderness is a lot of fun. We finally did it. Our kids pony ride back when they were little and that's very inexpensive. It's probably less than $10. It might even be $5 a ride. I'm not sure what it is now at Fort Wilderness Campground, but you can also go horseback riding. And I do have the information. It is 1407 WDW Play, and you can reserve horseback riding. You do not need to be an experienced rider to participate in it. You do need to have closed-toed shoes. That is a funny word to say. Say it three times. Closed-toed shoes. Okay. Closed-toed shoes. Closed-toed shoes. Closed-toed shoes. That is the funniest word. I mean, saying. Um, and you prefer to have, they prefer you to have pants on, but you don't necessarily have to. You're the one who's probably going to be uncomfortable having your leg run up against the horse's fur. But um, definitely requirement is closed code shoes. It's like riding $55 plus tax per person. And um, it takes you through the cabin area, the wooded trails, the um, campsite. Um, and if you're interested in pony rides for the younger kids, it's actually $8. My husband just looked it up for me. He's not just cruising through his phone right $8. now. He was actually giving me beneficial information. <laughs> so right now, you have to be, four, well, 48 inches to ride the ponies and or the horses, I'm pretty sure. And um, there is a weight limit. It's 48 inches tall to ride the horses. And um, 250 pounds or less to no, drive the horses. No taller than 48 inches. That's for so you the be, ponies. You have to be at least two, yeah, the, the ponies, you have to be at least two years old, under 80 pounds, and no taller than 48 inches. Very good. That's Thank eight, you very much. And it's $8. For 30 minutes. For 30 minutes. And that's more than enough because your kids are probably going to want off it. And you can <laughs> actually walk around, or you used to be able to, walk around and kind of hold your child as you walk slowly with the ponies. But as far as the horseback riding, it's at least 48 inches tall, 250 pounds or less, and not ages nine and up. Now, they all have the cutest names. I don't even remember what my horse's name is. I had a wonderful horse. I totally took control of that horse. He did not necessarily, but Logan is the one who really didn't take control of his horse. I did take control, I had the hard horse. Oh, oh! you have the harder horse yeah, than all of us. she gave me the horse that she said was more stubborn than stuff. Because probably because you're a big boy. No, because I've ridden before. Because I grew up on a farm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My son, on the other hand, went off in the woods. Now, mind you, this is not going to happen. Don't be afraid or anything like that. You just need to take control of your horse. That You have the guides with oh, you. Geez. Two or three guides. In, one in the front, probably two in the back. They will help you with anything. The horses aren't rambunctious. They're wonderful. And they will attach that horse to the level of experience or rider 
that's there. So like he had ridden before, I had ridden before. Our kids had, but it had been a while. What was Logan's horse's name? I don't remember. It was Hold some on. cute name. Can I holler it? Yeah. Logan. Logan. What was your horse's name at Disney? Pete. 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 Oh, Pistol Pete, wasn't it? Was it Pistol Pete? I called it that. Oh, <laughs> it was Pete, but my son called it Pistol Pete. I don't remember what mine was. It was cute. I'll have to go back and find um find out what mine was, but it was adorable and, and wonderful. And it was a wonderful experience. It's only, I have my stuff written down, guys, over here, so I keep looking over here. It was $55 plus tax per person. It was a 45 minute experience. <clears throat> um, I guess in total, more about an hour and a half. And you do check in at Tri-Circle D Ranch um, at so the Fort front. Wilderness Campground. And it's a lot of fun. You get to look at And you have to lock everything up, though. You can't bring a cell phone. You can't bring a, a video it. You can't do any of that because, of course, safety first. You do have to wear helmets and things like that. So, girls, if you're not prepared to mess up your hair, don't go riding. Um, but can lock you, everything up in a locker beforehand. Can you do GoPro on your helmet? And I uh, think you might be able to. You might be helmet. able to do a GoPro on your helmet, but I'm not real yeah, sure. You'd have to mount it and all that, and it is their helmets. So I'm not sure. You'll have to check with them about that. But that's why we have no video footage of any of it. I did take a few quick pictures before when my kids were sitting on the horses. Um, but then I had to lock everything up. I just remembered that. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Horseback riding, It's um, a lot of this stuff is well, kind of inexpensive. That's a nice inexpensive thing to do. I think so. And if you're not the parents paying for it all, if you're individually paying for it, I think it's, it's, it's great. It's not bad because you get to go down through the trails. It's not like you're just walking around. Yeah, and it's another way to explore. Yeah, you get to see more of the park that you wouldn't see normally. Yeah, so if you didn't want to do the golf cart rental and just wanted to do the horseback riding, you'd see a, a good bit of it that way as well. Especially if you were interested in one day camping or, or staying in a cabin at Fort Wilderness Campground. Which we need to do. Yeah, which would be fun. And it's definitely... Um, priced moderate for the cabins but to be honest you get more people in those rooms it's uh moderately priced for really deluxe accommodations i think so that's another that's another talk for another day <laughs> we are on number nine surrey bikes at Walt well, disney world okay, all i'm gonna say about this is disconnect that stupid bell <laughs> before you ever get on it if your wife is annoying just put some tape around that stupid bell. No, it's the best. It's for safety. It's not. Yeah, but you don't use it for safety. Y'all, this bell. I, I have. I've had bells on bikes before, and they don't work now. The only time I ever use a bell is in Key West. Or what about Castaway Key? Mm -hmm, Key West. Okay, why'd you use the bell there? Because I Okay, having fun. Having fun. Having a little too much fun. Either way, I love bells. And I'm going to push that bell as much as I can. But Surrey, bike, Surrey bikes, I always want to call them Surrey bikes. I don't know why. I should always remember Surrey, England. And then I should be able to remember. Either way, these are the bikes that you've always seen people renting. And you're always like, I'm so jealous. They're on those bikes. And I kept telling him for years, I want to ride those bikes. I want to get on those bikes. Let's do it. It's cheap. It's cheap. And it is cheap. They have two, four, and six-seater Surrey bikes. They are $25 plus tax. And you can rent them at some of the deluxe locations, Boardwalk, you know, Beach Club area, um, Yacht Club, um, Old Key West, um, Port Orleans, Riverside. So there's quite a few places, moderate and deluxe, that you can rent them. Um, you can't rent them over at our usual haunts, uh, like Polynesian or Grand Floridian. But either way, it's a lot of fun, I think. It's a good way to experience and, and not have to walk the Epcot or the boardwalk. I had a blast pushing that bell. And we do have a vlog I'll post below of my son, Logan, my husband, and I on it, me dinging that bell, him getting angry because he couldn't stand that somebody thinks he's being rude dinging that bell when it was me. But at the end of it, you were dinging the bell. I don't remember. Yes, I have video footage, you'll see, where he was, he dang, dang the bell? He dinged the bell? He rang the bell. Rang the bell. 
<laughs> Dang, he dinged the bell. He rang the bell at the end because there was a lady in the way and he wanted her, I guess, out of the way. Mm -hmm. And he did push it because our son was driving it. You'll see. I'll post it below. Either way, it is a lot of fun, y'all. It's about 30 minutes or so, and that's really all you need. Because if you're going to the boardwalk, it has some hidden hills that are a little bit of a workout. And half the time we were going, you're not pushing. No, you're pushing. You're pushing too much. And then at one point, he, we had to brake. Like, we were starting to drift because we had braked so hard. That one spot, oh, my God. To me, it was so much fun. And I will do it every time. It's great exercise, great fun, great way to tour wherever you're at at Walt Disney World Resort. And we will totally do it again and I will totally ring that bell all I want. <laughs> Need for speed. Don't talk to her Going. We got a hill coming. You need to get prepared to go in the middle and go. If we roll on a rowboat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if we're going uphill, start paddling. Now oh we need to. Okay, we're on to number 10. Something I recommend doing, especially if you want downtime after the parks, waiting in all the hot lines, are spa. You spa the spa at Walt Disney World Resort. I don't think you've done the spa at Walt Disney World Resort. We stayed at the Polynesian. No. I did the Census Spa, which is shared There's with the cruise. Grand Floridian. Here. Yeah, we did it on the DCL. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 because my parents. We did that on another cruise. Yeah, and I did it in Milani as well. That was another cruise. Pretty sure it was Disney. I'm almost 100% sure. Either way, couple, either way, couple, we're not talking couple, about DCL, though. We're in Milani right now. We are talking about Walt Disney World Resort. He has done spas before. He loves them, too. But recommend doing spa treatments at Walt Disney World Resort. They are very expensive, but what spa treatment isn't outside of Walt Disney World Resort? Um, since his spa, which is shared between the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian, but really it's at the Grand Floridian. Um, I did an 80 minute Swedish massage. You can book a massage or a spa treatment at 1407 WDW Spas. Um, and it was absolutely wonderful. It was $210 plus tax plus tip. Like I said, expensive, but you definitely get a VIP experience. All the specialty fruity mint waters and special, you know, uh, catering to and just really makes you feel like you're, you know, a, a VIP pretty much. A celebrity, I would say. And, uh, yeah, so definitely number 10, get a spa treatment at Walt Disney World Resort. Most of the deluxe resorts have them. Um, Wilderness Lodge also has a spa and just check it out. Like I said, 1407 WDW Spas. WDW is tripping me up. And what is your favorite over anything we've done today? Money to be golf or fishing. What? Golf or fishing. You said it so fast. Well, I mean, Are you it, speaking a different language? It depends on what mood I'm in at the time. Sometimes I'm fishing a lot more than I'm playing golf, and sometimes I'm playing golf a lot more than I'm fishing. So it just depends on whatever I'm into at the time, I guess. Yeah, I mean, really, if that would, the two of those things, it, it would be one of those two. Okay, my favorite thing to do at Walt Disney World Resort is probably the private fireworks excursion. I had family members on it. We had my parents' anniversary and my daughter's 21st birthday to celebrate. It is something you're just making magical memories, and that's a memory that I, I will never be able to get back. So, it was a wonderful experience, and um, these are memories that people will make that can last a lifetime. Okay, thanks for being with us today, and uh, thank you for joining me today. I all appreciate 75 it. Words. all seventy-five words from him. Most of it from my big mouth, but y'all know how I am. It's the way it and is in real life too. It's the way it, it normally is in the Gosden household. 
So thanks again for coming to see Dawn's Dorky Diary, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Lord, we are like a world.